So it's now officially time for my game of the year. This is where I believe game of the year should be done at the very end of the year. Not the beginning of December and where you cap off the nominations at the beginning of November. Like the Game Awards, it makes no sense. Uh, one of the games in my list should have been a no a, at least nominated for game of the year. But wasn't because it released just a tiny bit too late. And anyway, uh, so this is my top five games of the year. The ones I enjoyed most. Not necessarily uh, what I would rate the highest, if that makes sense. It's just the games I enjoyed the most. And before we begin, I want to leave a little special shout out to Concrete Genie. A very unique game, very pretty game. One I highly recommend, a PS4 exclusive. Death Stranding, again, another PS4 exclusive, or at least a timed exclusive. And also a Plague Tale. Those games are games you guys should check out. But they did not make my top five list. Also, every game I mention, there'll be a link to where you can purchase the game, or a few purchase links. And also, there will be a link to my, my my videos on that game. So if you guys are like, "Oh, cool, I've, I've heard about that game, but I've not seen a video on it," there'll be a link in the description below. So let's start at number five: Ancestors: Humankind Odyssey. Yes, I know a lot of reviewers gave this a very low score. I'm talking five and sixes. But some reviewers said this game has horses you can ride and fire in the game. And that doesn't even happen. So clearly they, get, they got a little bit bored playing the game. They played it for a couple of hours. They're like, I'm done. Let's just make something up. <laughs> which, is, which is not very... Uh, yeah, it's not great, is it? I must admit the game is long. And this is probably why it's down there at number five for me. Because it was very grindy towards the end. But it was so unique. That, that tension when you see a saber-toothed tiger attacking your your ape clan. You're, you're trying to stay alive. You're low on food. You're getting hungry. You need water. You try to get these evolution feats to try it and actually evolve as an ape. It was such a, a tense, incredible experience. Also a very pretty game. The map is massive as well. Yeah. A very unique series for me that I've done on my channel. It done very, very well and... I just loved every second of it. Uh, saying that, the end was a bit grindy. And trying to hit those evolution feats towards the end was a task. A massive task. I was doing... I was recording for three hours, for example. And the video would be like two hours. Not two hours. 20 minutes. Which was crazy. <laughs> very, very crazy. Because I was just cutting so much out. There's a lot of travelling. But it was so realistic. It just throws you into the game. And you got to learn. Learn how this game works. With no tutorial. Well, there's tutorials now. Apparently it's been updated a little bit. But when I played the game, it didn't tell you much. It told you the, the, the pure basics. There's no real story to it. Yeah, a very unique experience. One that I think you guys should uh, should check out. It's now available on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. I believe it might be in the sales as well. So, yeah. Now it's time for number four. Need for Speed Heat. For me, one of the best Need for Speed games for multiple, multiple years. The map is massive. The map is one of the best maps in Need for Speed. Any racing game for a long, long time. Loved customization. I liked the story. It, it definitely grabbed me. It was a little bit short. Just a bit short. Not enough content in terms of story for me, but it definitely was good enough. I just wanted more. More, more, more. The drive stories weren't... Was it the, what are they called? Drive stories? Again, they weren't that, that great really if i'm being completely honest but the cars there's a lot of cars there some obvious cars that are missing but that's not due to ea it's just lots of licensing issues loads of parts again i would like new parts i'm being a bit controversial here because i'm being quite negative but for me it's one of the best driving games i've played for a very very long time the driving physics are now a lot better i'd argue drifting has gone backwards a little bit but yeah a solid, solid, solid Need for Speed. The only issue I'd say, well, I've said a bunch of issues, but I would like more content after release. There's not been much. There's been like maybe one car, uh, two neon lights, and two horns. For me, that's not enough. The game came out beginning of, the, of November, I believe. So it's been a quite a long time. Post-release hasn't been that great. But there we go. Very good, very, very good Need for Speed. If you can buy in the sales... Highly recommend it. 
is a must buy for any Need for Speed or driving game fan. And now we go into my third podium position, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. For me, Baby Yoda and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order have to be the highlights of Star Wars this year. And EA, this came out of nowhere in terms of being a single player Star Wars game with no micro transactions whatsoever. Just a pure game released, fully working, ready to go. And what an experience it was. I don't want to go into the story too much, but it takes place after Order 66. And it's just a thrilling, thrilling ride. It's so, so good. So, so good. Also, some some surprises as well. Like, I, was, I was like, what? That just happened? Are you kidding me? That person's in the game? Oh, my God. It, there's some really epic moments. The combat is incredible. It's that sort of Dark Souls-ish uh, dodge, parry. But it's not too frustrating. I, f I find Dark Souls, Sekiro to be quite frustrating games at times. But this game didn't feel cheap. I, I knew when I, made a when I made a mistake. I could correct it. Go back in. Try again. Done. Uh, there's a few times where I died and I have to go back quite far. And obviously the enemies reappear. Which can be a little bit annoying. There's a, a few hard boss fights. And there's a little bit of grindy elements in the sort of latter part of the game. Where you're on a planet and it's like you just want to just leave that planet. I'm done with this planet. I want to go. But on the whole, I would highly, highly recommend this game. If you guys have not watched it, at least give it a watch. I believe it might be in the Sours again. Definitely check it out. If you like Star Wars, if you like that whole Dark souls -y sort of combat, highly recommend it. And um, yeah, I believe they actually added photo mode. There's lots of, lots of collectibles to get. It's a lot of fun. I think this might be the first year I don't take review scores very seriously because this game did not review very well. And I do worry about why it didn't review well. I might talk about that briefly in a second. But my second choice, my second favourite game of 2019 is Days Gone. Bend Studio, their first ever AAA game. Didn't have the budget of Naughty Dog or Death Stranding. But for me, it was such an epic, epic journey. Deacon was a really cool character. I like all the main characters in the game. I love the open world. I love the bike. I, I do worry why this game did... I, I was playing it. I was so... I mentioned it almost every episode. I was like, why did this... Why did this get a 4 out of 10 from GameSpot? I was like, what is going on? I don't get it. And I do worry that... I don't want to touch on this too much. But is it because it's a white character... It's a guy, a man, and he's a biker. I feel, I feel like that was one of the main issues about this game and why it reviewed so badly. Because I honestly, I can't, I'm playing it, I, it made no sense. For me, of course, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect game by any stretch. And this top five is not about what's the best game in terms of scores that I would give. It's the game I enjoyed most. I enjoyed this game so, so much. There was one particular scene that got picked up a lot by the press. It was... Sarah, Deacon's wife, saying, I want to ride you like you ride your bikes. Basically, she wanted to have sex with her husband. And that's just how she pulled it. And then was like, no, that's that's very insulting. Like, she just wants to have sex with her husband. That's, and he's, he's a biker. It's like, oh my God. Oh. Anyway, I got so frustrated with review scores for this game. And for me, it's such a good game. If you have a PS4... And you like that sort of zombie open world experience. This game has to be a must buy for you. Really thrilling story. You don't know what's going to happen next. And they, they tease the next game. And it's... Oh, I, I so badly want it on the PS5. I so badly want it. Post game support for this game has been pretty good as well. They've really updated the game. Halls are incredible. <laughs> incredible experiences with these just hundreds upon hundreds of freakers just running at you. You can set up traps. Or you can just shoot them down. One by one. I remember the first haul I took on. Man I panicked. And apart from maybe a game like Dead Rising. There's not really been that mass horde experience. It was uh, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway. Let's move on to number one. So this came out quite a long time ago now. Um, I believe it came out in February or March. And I've just announced they're doing the same to another Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 3. But yeah, my top game of the year was Resident Evil 2, the remake. And it, this comes from, 
I, I like Resident Evil. I'm not a super fan. So to say this is my, my top game of the year is quite a statement. This game is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's a very faithful remake. I played it. I played the original a little bit here and there. I was just like, wow. Wow. When Mr. T turns up in that police station, I pooped my pants. And it's not... I played scary games before. I don't love scary games, but this is just enough scare, enough tension, enough enough thrill to keep you going. They just done such a good job to grab that original game, bring it over to the current gen, update it, remake it from scratch. It was so good. It was just the perfect remake for me. And yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just it's just like for me, it's a must buy. Unless you really don't like scary games in any way, for me, it's almost a a perfect game 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 review scores again i don't want to go into them too much but for me if that if you are going to score this game it's hot it's high very very high and yeah i cannot wait for that resident evil 3 remake as well like honestly i can't wait i can't wait at all it's going to be absolutely awesome coming from a person that does not like resident evil that much i'm not a, a, a super super fan like i said i don't like scary games that much to enjoy this game that much to keep on playing i played it quickly i could not stop i was gripped by the story the characters i wanted to know what happened next i had to know because i hadn't played the whole game before so that was pretty cool anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video it was a little bit off script it was just me talking i selected my top five games and here's the video next year is going to be quite the task <laughs> there's a lot of new consoles some epic, epic games come out next year. Cyberpunk, for example. It's going to be a very, very good year. If you guys could build something, leave a like on the video. Check out links to the games in the description below. You can purchase them or you can watch the videos. It's up to you. And again, shout out to my, my little shout outs at the beginning. Concrete Genie, Death Stranding, A Plague Tale. All top, top games that I think you guys should at least watch or check out in some way. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.